Pips has a new favorite spot and it's not inconvenient or in the way at all. So before I begin this video, I just wanted to quickly say, I'm gonna be taking a little bit of a break from reading so much. I'm just kind of burned out. And I know in the hyper competitive booktube world, it can be like frowned upon to not be reading always. And I just wanted to take the moment to send the message that it's okay to not feel the need to read hours every single day. And reading should be enjoyable or, you know, taking away something from it, especially if you're reading sci-fi fantasy. So, hey, if I can take a break for a week or two, so can you. And I encourage you to do so if you're feeling a bit burnt out. Let's go ahead and jump in the video. What? What? Ah! Hi. <laughs> Hello, everyone from the forest to the deserts to the sea. I am going to be going over today in this here video. Books I've changed my mind on because I'm a human. No, not. Mm, I'm a goblin being and I have, you know, developing opinions. And as I've gotten better as a reviewer, my tastes have changed and matured. I have some books that over the recent months, years, decades, infinity, I've changed my thoughts on. And I'd like to go over the most recent ones with you now. I should have been doing this since I started the channel, if we're being honest. I should have been doing this for a long, long time, but uh, it just didn't really occur to me to do like updated thought videos until I saw Murph do a similar thing on her video recently. Check that out out if you want to. And it seems like a good move. So let's go ahead and jump on into some recent books I've changed them their thoughts on. First up is Scythe. This is a YA book that I've kind of polarized in two ways on. I actually appreciate the things I praised even more and am slightly a bit a smidge more critical on what I didn't like. I do want to say Scythe is a worthwhile read. Uh, I actually really love the concept behind this and execution of the idea of like corporatizing death. There is an organization in this world that executes people because people don't really die anymore and they need to have some form of population control. Learning about this organization, this world, and the story that unfolds within it, I actually, the more I think about it, the more I've had it ruminating in my brain, have enjoyed it. It's, it's a good one. It's rock solid. I still stand by. There were some things with themes, some holding back that I just didn't love and there are definite plot conveniences that exist. Characters, the actual writing style, everything else really worked well for this. Scythe deserves a lot of praise and I appreciate it the longer it's been since I've read it, which is, you know, a thing that happens occasionally. And I haven't read the sequels yet because I've heard very mixed things and I'm just hesitant to touch on moving from here, something I really enjoyed to something potentially worse and or better depending who I talk to. Next up, the Institute by Stephen King. I did just hit my elbow. This is probably a Stephen King book I was so positive on. Actually, I wasn't crazy positive, but I was positive on because of the height of like my Stephen King rebirth of love. And now that I'm a bit further from that, I still have a burning passion for King and enjoy him immensely. It's just not my favorite. Uh, and I've, the main reason I'm saying this though is because I've forgotten so much of it. This book failed to make an impact in me in any substantial way and fellow King fans I know I've asked about this book, they've even said like, I didn't read, oh wait, I did read that more often than I thought possible for a book. In other words, it's pretty bland. I think there is definitely some of that Stephen King spice in here that does make it worth a super mega Stephen King fans read, but that's pretty much all who I'd recommend it to. Aside from that, it's fairly predictable, it's fairly generic, and the characters are better than average, but I don't love anything aside from that. But now I want to jump over to a book that I don't necessarily have changing thoughts on, but more that I've finally settled in where I sit with it. Because I've had The Burning White just floating in my brain for like a year now. Ever since I read it, this book has just been dominating just random nights where I still try and figure out, do I like this ending? Was it good? Was it bold? Was it brash? I don't know. Well, I've decided. The Burning White did something special. If it's been in my head this long and I remember the story this clearly, Brent Weeks accomplished something, something that he wanted to do. And I give him a lot of credit for that. And I still believe Lightbringer as a whole is one of the most worthwhile fantasy reads currently out there. It's got one of the most interesting magic systems in existence and its world and characters bleed off that page. They just squish on out like an overly ripe zit. It's awesome. Uh, now, what I will say though, is with this last book, I still do have problems, but I like the last Lightbringer book. If I had to put a solid number on it right now, it's probably at a 6.5 out of 10 for me, but that 
chop down purely comes from just non-commitment in the ending. It felt like Mr. Weeks backed down, but I don't think that's necessarily the right words to use because I think he wrote exactly what he wanted to. It's just that what he wanted to did not go in the way I think a lot of his readers' expectations were, what he had built them up to with his themes. It wasn't like a subversion in a aha uh -huh sense. It was a subversion in like a uh -huh sense. I think time is going to be the ultimate deciding factor here. More people are going to need more time to think about on what exactly Lightbringer is going to be remembered as, but I think overall as the series, it still has some of the best characters I've read from the genre. It has some of the best battles the genre has ever seen, and a truly different world and cast of characters. I'm really curious about what people are thinking about the series now that we've had some time away from it. So if you wouldn't mind, if you've read Lightbringer from beginning to end, let me know in the comments down below. I will be looking to read how you're feeling about the series now. I've definitely heard people defend the ending and others attack it. It seems to be as polarizing as I kind of predicted in that review. Now I'm just more willing to solidly say it's a 6.5 for me as the ending book, but the series as a whole definitely stands at a more firm eight. Shadow of the Conqueror by Shad Brooks. This is a book I uh, directly said in my review, I need to see the sequels to figure out how I'm gonna feel on this because it sets up a lot. It makes grand promises and Shad Brooks does not back down in any way, shape, or form, I feel like, setting up exactly the storyline he wants to. But I've actually thought about this book more than I thought I would. It's stuck with me in greater ways than I would have ever predicted. And so I want to just give a tip of the hat in that sense. It's got some rougher edges. It's clearly an early novel from an author, but it's an admirable early novel from an author. Well above what can be expected that I even have for myself. Well above what I expect I will put out for my first book. But it's one I would happily recommend to a firm set of readers, especially those who look for a specific kind of fantasy. Heavily conflicted, morally gray character. I mean, this is an actual <laughs> morally gray character. There's an engaging world. It's not your typical medieval fantasy. Nice magical elements in play. All of it coming together quite nice. Children of Time. This gets the award for biggest glow up in my mind. I think I just read this either at a wrong time. I think I read it in like very torn apart chunks over a ridiculously long period of time that prevented me from actually enjoying this book on the level I should have, but I actually fully reread this one and wow, is it a lot better than I remember it being. This is up there with like a sci-fi great of the modern era and I rated it, I think at like a five out of 10. I don't even remember it this time. Not how we should be rated. This is clearly more in that eight plus range. The only people I wouldn't recommend it to are those who detest science fiction and or the idea of space spiders. It's smart. It does not talk down to its reader. It follows through on nearly every idea put forth. And I was just flat out wrong with this this dim dare boy here. Harrow the Ninth. So the ending of this book is going to cast a spell on a lot of people who get to it. After you back away from the book though, when you really start thinking about how painful the first 66% was. Oh man, does this kind of become more of a painful read. I think I would knock it down like a full point and a half from the original score I gave it. And it's not bad. And that ending is as good as I said. I'm not just talking about the second person here though. There is just rough communication between the author and the audience for most of this book. And again, second person can be clear and concise. This is just not, and that is not something I should have been as lenient on as I was. So I would bring this down substantially while also still noting the ending just left me floored. And then finally, we have one of my most praised fantasy books ever, and that's going to be Tagana. And this is more gonna be me uh, not saying that I don't enjoy it as much as I do. I do, but a lot of people who have recommended it to have said there are problems that I did not pick up on. Mainly women who I have recommended to have read it and just said the representation of female characters is not wonderful and a lot of the positions they're in make them uncomfortable. So this isn't necessarily saying I do not like this book as much as I said, but as a guy who isn't hyper aware of these things and doesn't, you know, and doesn't pick up on them every time they're an issue in a book, just would like to make aware that for the female readers in the audience, if, you know, if that bothers you, maybe don't pick this one up. I do try to keep an eye out for these things, but they can slip under my radar because obviously I'm not the person they affect as much. Uh, but that has been books Daniel Green's changed his mind on. Let me know what you think of these in the comments down below. And I actually want to ask, what's the book that after you've read it, you've slowly changed your opinion on as time has gone on the most? Some stand out to me tremendously. Like, I think I've made my developing opinion of it 
very clear here on the channel. And it's just like, it's as something can sit with you and you realize like a year out, it still is in your brain. It's something that you're like ruminating on constantly. You're like, well, wait, that probably was great. Or so bad, it won't leave you. There's, there's, there's two ways you can get there. <laughs> but anyway, guys, like and subscribe if you have not already. Hit the Patreon to like support what I do here. And have a good one, y'all. Peace.